1978, Sam Raimi made a short film called Within the Woods. It was basically a prototype for a film he'd been planning on making with a couple of friends. They managed to scrape together a couple hundred thousand dollars and went into a cabin in the middle of Tennessee to film it. What he came out with was one of the most influential, revolting, downright amazing horror films of all time. The Evil Dead. <laughs> Evil Dead centers around the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, the Book of the Dead. It's bound in human flesh and written in blood and has the power to summon unspeakable horrors, but only if certain passages are read from it. Which happens pretty much on the regular. Kanda. The cabin where the book currently lays is being visited by a group of teenagers who are slowly possessed, terrorized, and killed by the evil spirits unleashed from the book. All of them except for Ash Williams, played by the eternally badass Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell is the finest man to grace a silver screen. All the other actors just degrade his noble scenes. Ash manages to fight off the demons, destroy the book, and make it out of the cabin alive. Or does he? <laughs> After all these years, this movie still holds up pretty damn well. And I think what makes it so good is that it was made for such a small budget, but it used the most out of their resources and surroundings. Like, they couldn't afford top-notch effects, so they used claymation for some scenes, and it looked unbelievably gruesome. My friend has the Blu-ray of this, and the colors and textures just pop out at you as you watch it in high def. They also couldn't afford a soundstage, so they filmed everything in an actual cabin in the woods and Sam Raimi's garage. And Sam Raimi was actually a former magician, so he knew how to do some tricks and ideas to make for some excellent shots. Like every scene where the evil is spreading through the forest and getting into the cabin, it was filmed on a bicycle with a camera mounted to it. In fact, the bicycle was going so fast that the scream at the end of the movie was because it had run over Bruce Campbell and broken his leg. And this shot right here with the evil coming through the windows looks pretty good, right? Want to know how they did it? They broke a window. Yeah, no safety guidelines, just a 2x4 out of sight of the camera that shattered the damn thing. Also, there is this. I love this shot. I don't know if he meant for this to be a running motif, but any movie seen in a Sam Raimi movie featuring a mirror is immediately amazing. You killed them. We killed them. We? Even that, but for different reasons. Even though it's the first movie for most of the cast, it's got some pretty damn good performances. None of the characters are badly written, and you actually feel bad when they're being possessed by the demons, especially Cheryl, who's the first to go. Cheryl's scenes are probably my favorite in the whole film because of just how guttural and disturbing the evil voice coming out of her is. You will die! Like the others before you. One by one we will take you. Now that I'm discounting Linda's scenes because... My god. We're gonna get you. Not another peep. The childish taunting from her and that high-pitched voice still freaks me out no matter how many times I see it. Bruce Campbell, by the way, carries the last half hour or so of the film by himself, and the close-up shots and the facial expressions really bring home how terrified his character is. Until these things pop out of the walls. That'll break anybody's concentration, I don't care who you are. Every time I watch this movie, a different shot or visual really freaks me the hell out. And that's the sign of a well-done horror movie replayability. Even knowing all the beats, all the moments, who's gonna live, who's gonna die, and still finding things to be scared of, means that this is probably the perfect horror film. <laughs> the Evil Dead made a lot more money than people were expecting, mostly because it was made for so cheap and it had a pretty successful overseas run. So, a few years later they had enough in the budget to make a sequel. And thus we have Evil Dead 2. Dead by Dawn. Now the film was supposed to start off with a small recap for new viewers to jump right into the action, 
Unfortunately, the rights to show footage from the first film weren't readily available, so they spent a small portion of the introduction trying to connect the two, focusing on just Linda and Ash. But it doesn't take long before the demons get the better of Ash at every turn, from tormenting him with visions of his dead girlfriend, to causing him to lose a hand, to dousing him in blood and bile, to... this. <laughs> now there's a familiar feeling that creeps in once he's joined by more people, but they're picked off pretty easily and only Ash can stop the evil from the book, using his wits, determination, and the most amazing montage in film history. Bruce Campbell! Bruce Campbell! We're gonna be best friends! We're gonna come to your house and watch Hercules and tease him until the end! Groovy. After seeing this, it is no wonder that he's able to take whatever the Necronomicon has to throw at him and send the evil away forever. Or does he? Now, the first movie kind of focused mostly on the possessions themselves, giving most of the characters equal time so you got to know them. This one is entirely about Ash's ascension from horror movie victim to full-blown action hero. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still got plenty of scares and gore like you wouldn't believe, but Campbell is really hamming it up here. Oh, no. No. No! He is chewing at the scenery every damn scene he is in, and it is all amazing. I said I was all right! Are you listening to me? Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm all right! When you think about how strong his performance was in the first movie, Campbell can be pretty subtle and emotional if need be, but if Dead by Dawn taught me anything, it's that this man was born for physical comedy. His facial expressions, his delivery, his pratfalls, this... <laughs> this... Son of a... All of this... <laughs> it's just so much fun to watch every time. And this is the Ash that everybody knows. Not the quiet, loveless survivor, but the bug-eyed, manly one-liner machine. Now, I think the first Evil Dead is a stronger film on its own, and this one could be a little bit too snarky for its own good, but I still love every second of it. And the decision to replace most of the tension and scares with dark humor works really well, a lot better than I thought it was going to. Ash's transformation from a scared kid to the single baddest ass who ever lived is always fun to watch. Especially when you take into account the ending. Now, if you bought that there's a Book of the Dead that unleashes spirits to possess and kill you whenever you read aloud from it, hang on, because your suspension of disbelief is about to take the beating of a lifetime. Now, the evil possessing the house is sucked through a portal, but it doesn't close, causing Ash to be sucked right in with it. And when he comes out, guess where he is? Yup. At the last minute, they jump the shark and send us back in time. Now, some of you might be thinking, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Why would they take an amazing horror franchise like Evil Dead and turn it into this ridiculousness? And all those people, I say, you need to watch Army of Darkness right now. Army of the Night, we came to save of Darkness has the now man out of time Ash fighting his way through the possessed people, now called Deadites, in the Middle Ages. He defeats a few witches, makes out with the ladies, unknowingly allows the demons to invade the land, and there's a ferocious battle where he uses all of his talents and all in all badassness to defeat the evil and send it away forever. Then he uses the book to make it back to his original time. Mm. Or does he? Oh wait, that's what happened in the alternate ending. In, in the real one, it turned out all right. Lady, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to leave the store. Believe it or not, this was supposed to be the plot of Evil Dead 2. But I guess they couldn't find a way to make it happen without the movie of build-up leading up to it, so we got Dead by Dawn instead. 
which I will never complain about. See this? This is my boomstick! But in this movie, Ash is no longer put in a bad situation and becomes the hero. He starts off his quest by defeating monsters in a pit and spewing out amazing catchphrases. Yo, she-bitch. Let's go. Good. Bad. I'm the guy with the gun. You found me beautiful once. Honey, you got real ugly. And then he ends it by defeating an evil version of himself in a gigantic castle siege that includes a car that has a propeller on the front of it, shotguns, and explosions. Bruce Campbell, Bruce Campbell, I need the measurements for your chin. Gonna get me a carbon implant, and I'm gonna be your twin. With the exception of one or two quick scares, the movie is not frightening in the slightest. It's got elements from the original movies and a lot of callback scenes, but for every moment where there's a mention of the Necronomicon, the Deadites, and the Witches, there's just as many homages to movies like Return of the Living Dead, Gulliver's Travels, and The Three Stooges. Ah. Oh, oh, I'm blind! I'm blind! Uh. Oh, 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 oh. But if you put in the back of your head, this is no longer a horror series and is instead an action-adventure one, how can you not like this? Hail to the king, baby. Now before I wrap up, I do want to bring up a couple other movies quickly. First of all, there was a film that came out a couple years ago called My Name is Bruce. Ever see Rawhide? Yeah. You like it? Yeah. Well then you know you gotta keep them doggies rolling. It's an independent movie that follows a hugely exaggerated, beat-up Bruce Campbell as he's called on to take down an ancient Chinese monster bent on destroying a town. Retreat! <laughs> now this is a lot of campy fun and it's got some cool cameos, but it's really just for hardcore Evil Dead fans. Now I ask you, what could be a better ending than that? <laughs> and because everybody's gonna ask about it, yes, I want to talk about the remake that came out in 2013. Now, when we get to later movies this month, you're going to hear my thoughts on horror movie remakes, and I really do not like them. I don't know why they decide to remake good horror movies instead of bad ones. I had a lot of bad feelings going into this, and I ended up loving it. Based on this motherfucker! I'm not saying it was perfect, but I really liked some of the ideas they put forth, and I felt it really kept the spirit of the original. The changes they made improved a lot of aspects of the story rather than destroying it. Like, I like how the main characters have a reason to go to the cabin now. They're trying to get their friend through withdrawals of heroin without the possibility of a relapse. They have a reason not to believe her when she says there's something in the woods because it can be chalked up to hallucination. And I also really need to commend Jane Levy for her part. She was terrifying in this. He's not gonna let you leave. And he's not gonna stop going at you. I do, he has all of you! Everything from her facial expressions to the wicked joy she got from tormenting the cabin mates, it was fantastic. But yeah, I actually recommend the remake. Go figure. Groovy. The original Evil Dead movies show what passionate, well-made horror is supposed to look like. It came out at a time when horror movies of this caliber were just starting to get cult followings and recognition, and nowadays it's remembered as one of the first truly great horror series of the 80s and 90s. Now, if you want to check up on later stories of Ash Williams, there are a few video games, uh, a comic series that I've heard is actually pretty good, but I feel like there's a missed market here. If only someone were to make a television series about Ash's later adventures. You know, have him fighting off evil in a modern-day setting. If only. Yo, Granny! Let's go! <laughs> Dreams come true, people. Groovy. Bruce Campbell!